you were the first to describe the different prognostic subgroups that are involved in the treatment with chemotherapy for bladder cancer. Perhaps you could elaborate a little bit on that because I think that's important for the listener to understand that the bladder cancer is a very heterogeneous disease even within the metastatic state. Yeah, so, so it's been looked at a number of different ways, and all these studies point to the same uh, conclusion, and that is that there are some patients who, who can do well. Uh, and those are patients who uh, we would generally think have a disease that is restricted to lymph nodes, so-called better disease prognostically, and that they have a good performance status. Uh, and really, I think the good performance status reflects tumor burden. Uh, so those patients who have less of a tumor burden, um, have nodal-only disease, can do better than the patients who have visceral disease or encumbered from their disease uh, due to the um, high volume of, of metastasis or evidence of visceral disease, like liver, lung, or bone. And so when we look at these trials, we'll be looking at subsets of those patients who are so-called good risk, uh, that is not only uh, good performance status, and in the other end of the spectrum, the patients who do very poorly, those who have visceral disease and have a, a poor performance status and for whom many times we can't give chemotherapy, but they might be um, opportune for immunotherapy. And we're gonna see that for some of the data. And, and from that standpoint too, we can also divide some of the sensitivity to chemotherapy based upon some of those subgroups that you mentioned before. Perhaps you can describe for the audience the differences in the different uh, subgroups and how they relate to responsiveness. So we're, this is emerging data from the TCGA and a number of different uh, studies that are ongoing now. Um, and that, um, you know, the backbone of these uh, therapies uh, is cisplatin, and there are uh, genes that are responsible for repair for cisplatin. And so data from, for example, Dr. Plimek's uh, work and our work um, suggest that there are certain genes um, that if they are altered in the patient's tumors, makes them much more sensitive to uh, systemic chemotherapy, cisplatin-based chemotherapy. Uh, I shouldn't talk for Betsy's work, but you know, in terms of, of uh, uh, ATM and, and FANC-C, for example, RB, that, that actually looked very encouraging. The neoadjuvant setting, systemic chemotherapy, those patients uh, did extraordinarily well. In our series and, and others, um, what we call DNA uh, uh, repair response genes, that deleterious uh, 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 lesions within those genes confer exquisite sensitivity to cisplatin. So these studies are now just emerging on how we might be able to select out those patients who respond to chemotherapy, cisplatin-based chemotherapy, and those who do not. Betsy, would you like to further elaborate on that? Uh, you've done a lot of good work in neoadjuvant therapy with, uh, with looking at some of these different subgroups. Perhaps you'd like to expound on that. Sure, so I think what Dean's talking about is more DNA repair lesion in the mm -hmm. tumors, which is separate from the subgroups, which were based on RNA expression, gene expression data. But uh, the DNA repair lesions, what's interesting and sort of a correlate to what you just described, is that we also see that those tumors with the highest number of alterations have the best response to cisplatin. And then looking at the tezolizumab data that Jonathan Rosenberg presented and published, that high mutational load also portends a good response to immunotherapy. So I think as we talk through all these new options for patients, my concern is that it may be the same patients that respond to mm, both tools exactly. we have, the chemotherapy and the immunotherapy. And we don't know yet. I think mm -hmm. we'll have to look more closely at this to see. Um, but just to emphasize that while these drugs are great, and I look forward to talking more about them, it's for a subgroup of patients, and exactly. we need to focus on the rest as well.